How's it going, everybody? Since we started the new player guide and journey, I get questions all the time, specifically about which teams are worth building as a new mid-game player that's going to give me the most benefit in the long run. And when should I deviate to start working on the Apocalypse? Because Apocalypse, though an amazing character, is not exactly the game-defining character he was a year ago. So in this video, we're going to answer all those questions and more. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, make sure you leave it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. But without further ado, let's get into it. I feel like I say this in every single new player video guide that we put out, but it is still true to this day. Your number one priority in building teams up is going to be, as a new player and as a mid-game player, your raid teams. But not just building them up to satisfy the raids you're currently doing, you need to be pushing your alliance to get to the final tier of raids, which right now is Incursion 2, uh, and even start climbing that difficulty slider. This is going to be very, very easy with the current crop of raid teams that we have, these three teams in particular. The Spider Society, which is currently being released, the last member Penny Parker is going to have her free-to-play method out soon. Hive Mind, which was the sort of newest team before Spider Society, and then Extreme. This team is probably still going to have all the same beneficial uses in the raid mode in the next raid tier, but it goes beyond that. These three teams are making insane waves at the endest of end games. In the, in the Crucibles, where I have a huge vendor account that's like six years old, the account. We still see Spider Society in every single Crucible defense or in parts of them used on offense. Hive Mind, they're going to be making a lot of use out of that Void Knight, that Red Goblin combo, or if there's a Raid Room, they get used there. Or they get paired with Skrull because they match that Hero's Villain very, very well. And the Extreme Team is just probably one of the best cookie getter teams we've ever seen, the way that they mesh together. These guys get play everywhere. So the question becomes, these guys are worth building up past the point of where I need them to be to do the highest raid difficulty. To do incursion uh, two difficulty, I don't know, one, two, and three, you don't need these guys to be level 100, but you kind of want that for end game. So should you keep building them up to that point? No, because then we're never gonna get anywhere as we're leveling. It's gonna take us too long, too much gold, too much training materials to keep up with that. And then we have all our eggs into one basket. That might be decent if you just wanna focus on arena, but then you're not gonna have enough teams for modes like Crucible or in War, and that's gonna really bite you in the butt. So as far as a dropping off part for these guys go, I strongly believe you want to bring all three of these teams up as a new mid game player to level 85 gear tier 16. That's going to be helping us to do a bunch of the nodes in the dark dimension five for Dormammu, but it's also going to give them great use in war and crucible. Now there's a couple of characters that you'll bring even higher nightcrawler gambit void knight, maybe red goblin, Definitely a couple of those new Spider Society members, because you might want to use them to unlock Skrull. And then you're going to need to bring them up to, I believe it's level 95, gear tier 18. So there's going to be a couple of those MVP members that will really elevate your team even higher. But the rest of them, level 85, gear tier 16 is going to be a very healthy stopping point for those of you who are still working on these teams. Then there's the next two raid teams. Now these two raid teams, their future is definitely in question. Pegasus, it's going to be hard for them to zone up Pegasus, but you know the next raid tier, they can't be as dominant as they are now, and Bifrost is going to be very easy for them to phase out. However, these two teams are definitely still worth building right now. Pegasus, like the three previous teams, has so much use in War and Crucible that building them to the exact same levels of their three teams, level 85, gear 2 to 16, I don't hate that idea. There's a little bit too much overlapping with Global for it to be useful in Dark Dimension 5, but I'm still probably going to do that. I'm still probably going to bring my entire Pegasus team to gear tier, 18, or gear tier 16, sorry, level 85, but I'll probably bring my Vol even higher. Nope. My Kestrel even higher. She's the Pegasus member. Kestrel is needed for the Mephisto unlock anyway, unless you want to build up Wars characters. And she's going to carry the team's damage. And in a lot of modes, she's going to be the defining factor. So with Kestrel, I'll probably keep leveling her up. Every single time I hit a level, I'll tr tr be trying to put one on Kestrel. Same is true for Bifrost, but we're actually going to take a step further back from Bifrost at this point. If we can leave them at level 80, gear tier 15, and just give Vol that same Kestrel treatment where we keep leveling Vol up, we're going to want her for Dark Dimensions later anyway. She's going to hard carry the team, but at least her members at level 80 with gear tier 15, they're going to survive long enough to kind of feed into that expose and make sure our Vol is doing what she needs to do to carry the team. She's going to be getting more alts off, more specials off. She's going to be retaliating more. We need to have some T4s into the Bifrost team. The other T4s and the other teams, you can kind of... You kind of gauge what we have on the Patreon or what you see from other content creators. It's probably still worth it for those guys. But for Bifrost, it's going to be very bare bones now. We're talking Vault T4s for sure. Teen Loki passive, maybe Sylvie passive. 
uh, still the ultimate for the extra turn meter rewind, and that's probably it at this point. You don't want to put too much in the Bifrost. They're definitely on their way out. But that's going to be our first priority. Get your raid teams in order. Get them to those stopping points we just talked about. And then we're going to start working on unlocking some fun characters. All right, so you got your raid teams under control. They're all performing at the same level as we just talked about, or you have them at whatever raid tier you're currently doing. I still highly recommend pushing the highest raid tier possible, but if you're happy with where your raid teams are, then it's time to start unlocking some really, really fun characters. Start with the Horseman. We do have a video on this channel kind of detailing how to get the Horseman unlocked in kind of a cheesy method, but I'll quickly go over it here again. I'm not going to talk about the unlocks for a couple of these Horsemen. I'm just going to go straight to the maximum. So to max Morgan the Fae, you really just need your extreme team at gear tier 14, level 75. To max out your rogue, you're gonna need your spider society and your hive mind and your extreme team at gear tier uh, 14, level 75. To max Archangel, we're gonna want superior six. So this is gonna be the first non-raid team that we're gonna be building up. We're gonna want them at level seven to gear tier 13. We're not really doing this for Archangel. We're gonna be using superior six for a lot of other reasons, but this is just a baseline if you wanna get Archangel unlocked for whatever reason. And then we are also gonna need our extreme at level uh, 75 gear tier 14. Once again, I have those three characters maxed. I have Morgan Le Fay, Rogue and Archangel maxed from doing this method. Then there's Red Hulk. Now, unfortunately, in that last video, which was a very, very well done video in my opinion, uh, we had a little bit of wrong information when it came to Red Hulk. The new Avengers can't really handle uh, the higher difficulties of those Avenger nodes. We do have to do the entire thing. So if you want to max out Red Hulk, you're looking at the following. Hive Mind, level 75, gear tier 14. New Avengers, same build. Bifrost, same build. Superior 6 for those villain nodes, same build. That'll be a better reason to build your Superior 6. And then Spider Society for those skill nodes. And if you build up all five of those teams to level 75, gear to 14, you could definitely walk away with a max at Red Hulk. Probably have to do a few resets, but you'll get it done. All right, then we get to kind of what I consider the more um, enjoyable unlocks. Green Goblin, Black Cat, and we'll talk about Nova. But if you want to get to get Green Goblin unlocked, I also have a video about doing that on my channel. It's not very hard, and that's going to lead you to actually having the Superior 6 team, which opens up a lot of things we talked about. It's going to help you get a maxed out Archangel. It's going to help you get that Red Hulk. It's going to help you get Black Cat, which we'll talk about. And also, you could use them to help you get Rogue if you don't have Spider Society built up for those opening city nodes. But to unlock Green Goblin, you are going to need, once again, your new Avengers at level 70, gear tier 13. This is why this is the Avenger team we're currently leaning into, because they are going to be useful for both Red Hulk and for Green Goblin. And because they're a war team, they're actually going to have more use, longer life for you as a mid-game player. So it's kind of, it's a smarter investment than going buck wild elsewhere. We're going to need to build our uh, Hive Mind, Vulture, and Doc Ock to level 70 gear tier 13. That's perfectly fine. Hive Mind is our raid team, Vulture and Doc Ock, part of the Superior slash Sinister 6 teams that you can make. They're very, very good characters. We're going to need our Extreme Blasters at level 70 gear tier 13, and our Pegasus also at level 70 gear tier 13. It's not a big investment outside of your raid teams to get Greed Goblin unlocked, and he unlocks Superior 6, which unlocks a whole bunch of other stuff. Let's talk about getting Green Goblin max, though, because there's a new requirement. So we'll need all the teams we just talked about now at level 75, gear to 14, but you also need to introduce the Rebirth team. But here's the thing. Three of the Rebirth members are useless. Two of them just got put onto the Out of Time team, which is an amazing war team, so they fill that same function as the new Avengers do in the fact that they're going to have a long life. But also, the Out of Time team is going to be used to unlock the next legendary character that we are assuming is Old Man Logan based on data mines. So when you're building your Rebirth team for the Green Goblin unlock, if you just want to chill on it, wait till you're like level 80, maybe even level 85, and build up your Captain America, your Peggy Carter, to whatever the highest gear tier and level is for that, so they can carry your Agent Venom, carry your US Agent, carry your Winter Soldier, that's going to be a smarter investment. So it is going to have, it is going to make you wait longer to do it, but it's going to be worthwhile in the long term as far as your resources go. And once we have Green Goblin maxed out, or at least a few red stars on him, we could then get Black Cat unlocked. To do that, all we need is a extreme level 75 gear tier 14 for that first node. And Superior 6, Vulture instead of Lizard, Mysterio instead of Slayer, level 75 gear tier 14, hopefully with maybe a little bit more investment into Green Goblin uh, for something we're going to talk about in a little bit. And that'll be to unlock Black Cat. Now to max out Black Cat... 
I don't know. That's kind of an unknown for me. We're going to need to start investing into Doom and Dorm for that. Uh, it's definitely something I'm going to explore. We'll have it in a later video. Black Cat getting her maxed out isn't the highest on my priority list. That Secret Defender team, though amazing, isn't as impactful as Superior Sixes on the entirety of your roster. And then finally, Nova. To unlock Nova, don't even worry about it. It's not worth it. Your global bio section, you're not, you're not gonna have like Gamma built up yet. Your uh, Masters of Evil Quicksilver, like why would you have that built up? It's just not worth the headache yet to get Nova. We would revisit that at a later time. Once we have those legendaries under control, it's time to start looking at some Dark Dimension characters. Uh, in most particularly, Dark Dimension 4 and Dark Dimension 5 introduced the legendary tag that is needed. So from Dark Dimensions 1, 2, 3, we really just went in there with our raid teams. And maybe we brought in a Kang to help with the cosmic section. And we just sort of autoed it, right? In Dark Dimension 4 and Dark Dimension 5, there's now the legendary tag, which is going to be great because we just maxed out our Morgan and our Rogue very easily, and we got Green Goblin unlocked. Maybe we put the extra effort in, got him maxed, and we have Doc Ock from the regular legendary events tab, and we're going to build these guys up. Now, this is going to help us actually go back and unlock better characters, right? Because to get into Dark Dimension 4, you need to bring them up to level 80, gear tier 15. And then to get Dark Dimension 5, level 85, gear tier 60. Now we're going to have Rogue, Morgan the Fae. You could do your Red Hulk here if you built him up as well. I would not worry about doing Archangel just yet. And then Green Goblin, Doc Ock. That's going to help us with our Superior 6 team. So you can see there's so much overlap happening here. And because it is a predetermined level you have to build these characters up to, I don't have to give a recommendation. Have them at the minimum to enter the mode and go from there. Uh, and then so we have Doom and Dorm unlocked, then maybe we can start talking about what it would take to... Uh, get Black Cat maxed out. Uh, and then maybe we start looking at, you know, getting Nova unlocked by building up Quicksilver and Titania. Though I still am not sure that's what I would rush. No, instead, what I would rush is once we have Dark Dimensions are kind of out of control, we're going through the flow, we got our legendary characters unlocked, I would start looking at rounding out my roster. So we have our raid teams. That's five teams. They're doing really well in a bunch of modes right now. We had to level up our superior six. They're amazing in Crucible and in War. So we have a six team there. We had to build up new Avengers. They're really good in War. They're uh, okay in Crucible. We have our two Rebirth members built up. Maybe we start working our out of time for the future legendary. So that's a seven team there. But we need six teams for defense, six teams for offense in Crucible, then 10 teams for defense and 10 teams for offense in War. So it's time to start looking at rounding out our roster having some strong universal characters to plug in here plug in there maybe it's a duo they got to carry an entire fight of their self uh, and these sort of characters are what you're looking at i'm hiding black cat right now but around this time is when we look at we got black cat unlocked so we might as well build up her team we would do that secret defenders team hard light from the raid store unlock robbie from the crucible store build up those three characters put in some powerful other characters around side them and they can get a lot of work done Okay, you get him from the Incursion campaign. You're going to need him for Nova eventually anyway. He's really helping you out in the arena. And you can pair him with another group of people on this list, the Cabal team. And all of a sudden, you have an amazing war team, an amazing Crucible team for that early mid-game. And honestly, late-game Crucible, having uh, Kang with your Cabal team, that might start becoming more of the norm depending on what people put on defense. So you're jumping the meta, which is really exciting. Your Red Hulk, you're going to have to build him up for the Apocalypse Saga eventually anyway, which we're going to talk about in a second. But also, he's part of the War Team. Uh, the War Gamma Team, they're going to have such a longer life than Morgan Le Fay, than Rogue, than definitely than Archangel. So he's going to become a very interesting character that you can put a lot of resources in because he's going to spearhead that team. And then characters like Icarus and Cersei, who they're easily obtainable in the early game and they do very interesting mechanics. If somebody happens to put a hand team on defense or one weak character in a war team, all of a sudden you throw your Icarus at it, you get the double explosion, you've really set the stage. So once we get our raid team set up, we get our legendary characters unlocked, we want to round out our roster. And we definitely want to do this, unfortunately though it is, before we start focusing on Apocalypse, but once we have our Crucible and our War roster kind of set in stone, we have six teams on defense, six teams on offense, 10, maybe not 10, maybe five on defense in War with 10 offensive options, then we can start looking at Apocalypse. And you could kind of fill some of the Horseman teams to do that, but I do want to give a word of warning. When it comes to jumping off the flow of the game to get Apocalypse, you are building up some stinker teams. And I want to give you guys a little anecdotal story. I faced off against uh, an individual who was hard-focusing Apocalypse Unlock. 
he had 5 million more TCP than me, which if you're an endgame player, that's nothing. But put this into perspective. My TCP was 4 million. His was 9 million. There's not a lot of fat on these rosters. He had really big Dark Hole team, really big Gamma team, really big Death Sea team. I beat his Dark Hold on like a 600k punch up in Crucible with Extreme. Same thing with Gamma. I beat it with my Pegasus. And I think I used an Eternals Kang team against his uh, Archangel Death Sea team. And I won the Crucible on a 5 million punch up when I had less than 5 million total TCP. Absolutely crazy. And this is where you want to start putting things into perspective as to where Apocalypse places it in the game. If you have Apocalypse and I don't, there's really only one mode where you have a monumental advantage. And that'll be in the arena, right? In Crucible, my Cabal team is actually better than Apocalypse. And I only had to build up three characters for Cabal, where you had to build up 20 characters to, just to get Apocalypse. And then you have four stinker teams at this point. Except Gamma is really good in War. Uh, if I built up my Secret Defenders, I just built up one team. They are kind of a hard counter to what Apocalypse does, right? And you had to build up 20 characters. Again, I built up five. So if I build up the eight characters with Secret Defenders and Cabal, I now have two really powerful options, but you've really only walked away with one. It doesn't mean we skip Apocalypse, but it does mean the value proposition on Apocalypse has greatly diminished, and there's more to the story as to, like, new is always better. So you want to keep your eye out on what's coming down the horizon. But as far as Apocalypse goes, uh, I know that they've, they've talked about wanting to kind of streamline his release, which I think is necessary, because the way the game flows, it flows in gear tiers and levels, right? Once you hit level 70, you unlock the first Dark Dimension, you hit five levels higher, a new gear tier, the next Dark Dimension, then the next one, the next one, the next one. But once we get to Dark Dimension 5, it goes completely off the rails, where we got to build up Unlimited, Dark Hole, Gamma, Death Seed, but not only build them up to like gear tier 17 with the levels, we got to put ISO on them. It's, a, it's this whole, it's a derailment of the flow of the game, which kind of made sense when the year Apocalypse was released, but makes absolutely no sense now. And it'll stall you out from getting your Super Scroll unlocked, from starting to work on Mephisto. It just, it's not the, it's, it's just not a good time investment to start with. It's not like once I get dorm done, I'm like, okay, now stop everything, start going for Apocalypse. I'm not gonna do that. Because like I said a little while ago, newer is kind of always better. And we got some new teams coming soon. We have the Mercs, Mercs for Mouth, whatever team that was data mined. Old Man Logan has a new legendary character where we need the out of time to unlock. We got whatever is coming with Professor X. And if teams like Cabal and Superior Six and Secret Defenders are already outmatching what Apocalypse does, all these newer teams probably will as well. And with your advantage in Arena, if I get Super Scroll before you do, because I focused all my efforts there, or if I like have a Black Knight and I start pairing it with Nightcrawl, I do some creative things with Secret Defenders, I could still get around your Apocalypse. So your advantage isn't as secure as you would want it to be. But that's it for this video, guys. So that's what I would suggest. We talked about some levels that I would suggest building to get certain characters, when you should start rounding out your roster, what to kind of, how to approach, I guess, Apocalypse and, and keeping your mind on new teams. Because when the new Mercs for Mouth team comes out, I already have my Cabal level 70. My raid teams are functioning where they're at right now, but I'm still going to be investing in them all the way. I'll probably stop for just a week. And I will level up all the Mercs for Mouth team up to level 70. And that's how I'm going to handle this. The newer teams are always better. But we can't just completely ignore all the great legendary characters that came before us. We want to get through them as efficiently as possible. Anyway, I hope this video helped you. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if it, if you did, make sure you leave it a like, share with your friends, subscribe to the channel. That really helps me out. I greatly appreciate it. But for right now, stay happy, healthy, have fun. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now. That's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Stay happy, healthy, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one.